Alma chapter 31. Alma heads a mission to reclaim the apostate Zoramites. The Zoramites deny Christ, believe in a false concept of election, and worship with set prayers. The missionaries are filled with the Holy Spirit. Their afflictions are swallowed up in the joy of Christ, about 74 BC. Now it came to pass that after the end of Korahor, Alma having received tidings that the Zoramites were perverting the ways of the Lord, and that Zoram, who was their leader, was leading the hearts of the people to bow down to the dumb idols, two dumb idols, his heart again began to sicken because of the iniquity of the people, for it was the cause of great sorrow to Alma to know of iniquity among his people. Therefore his heart was exceedingly sorrowful because of the separation of the Zoramites from the Nephites. Now the Zoramites had gathered themselves together in a land which they called Antionum, which was east of the land of Zarahemla, which lay nearly bordering upon the seashore, which was south of the land of Jershon, which also bordered upon the wilderness south, which wilderness was full of the Lamanites. Now the Nephites greatly feared that the Zoramites would enter into a correspondence with the Lamanites, and that it would be <clears throat> the means of great loss on the part of the Nephites. And now, as the preaching of the word had a great tendency to lead the people to do that which was just, yea, it had more powerful effect upon the minds of the people than the sword, or anything else which had happened unto them. Therefore Alma thought it was expedient that he should try, that they should try the virtue of the word of God. Therefore he took Ammon, and Aaron, and Omner, and Himni he did leave in the church in Zarahemla, but the former three he took with him, and also Amulek, and Zezram, who were at Malik, and he also took two of his sons. Now the eldest of his sons he took not with him, and his name was Helaman, but the names of those whom he took with him were Shiblon and Corianton, and these are the names of those who went with him among the Zoramites to preach unto them the word. Now the Zoramites were dissenters from the Nephites, therefore... They had, they had had the word of God preached unto them, but they had fallen into great errors, for they would not observe to keep the commandments of God <clears throat> and his statutes according to the law of Moses. Neither would they observe the performances of the church to continue in prayer and supplication to God daily, that they might not enter into temptation. Yea, in fine, they did pervert the ways of the Lord in very many instances. Therefore, for this cause, Alma and his brethren went into the land to preach the word unto them. Now, when they had come into the land, behold, to their astonishment, they found that the Zoramites had built synagogues, and they did gather themselves together one on one day of the week, which day they did call the day of the Lord, and they did worship after a manner which Alma and his brethren had never beheld. For they had a place built up in the center of their synagogue, a place for standing which was high above the head, and the top thereof would only admit one person. Therefore, Whoso desired to worship must go forth and stand upon the top thereof, and stretch forth his hands towards heaven, and cry with a loud voice, saying, Holy, holy God, we believe that thou art God, and we believe that thou art holy, and thou wast a spirit, and thou art a spirit, and thou wilt be a spirit for ever. Holy God, we believe that thou hast separated us from our brethren, and we do not believe in the tradition of our brethren, which was handed down to them by the childishness of their fathers, but we believe that thou hast elected us to be thy holy children, and also thou hast made it known unto us that there shall be no Christ. But thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever, and thou hast elected us that we shall be saved, whilst all around us are elected to be cast down, to be cast by their wrath, by thy wrath down to hell. For the which holiness, O God, we thank thee, and we also thank thee that thou hast elected us, that we may not be led away after the foolish traditions of our brethren, <clears throat> which doth bind them down to a belief of Christ, which doth lead their hearts to wander far from thee, o our God. Again we thank thee, O God, that we are a chosen and a holy people. Amen. Now it came to pass that after Alma and his brethren and his sons had heard these prayers, they were astonished beyond all measure, beyond all measure. For behold, every man did go forth and offer up these same prayers. Now the place was called by them Ramiemptum, which being interpreted is the holy stand. Now for this stand they did offer up every man the self same prayer unto God, thanking their God that they were chosen of him, and that he did not lead them away after the tradition of their brethren, and that their hearts were not stolen away to believe in things to come which they knew nothing about. Now, after the people had all offered up thanks after this manner, they returned to their homes, never speaking of their God again, until they had assembled themselves together again to the holy stand to offer up thanks after their manner. Now when Alma saw this, his heart was grieved, 
for he saw that they were wicked and a perverse people, yea, he saw that their hearts were set upon gold, and upon silver, and upon all manner of fine goods. Yea, and he also saw that their hearts were lifted up unto great boasting in their pride. And he lifted up his voice to heaven and cried, saying, O oh, how long, O Lord, wilt thou suffer that thy servants shall dwell here below in the flesh, to behold such gross wickedness among the children of men? Behold, O God, they cry unto thee, and yet their hearts are swallowed up in their pride. Behold, O God, they cry unto thee with their mouths, while they are puffed up even to greatness with the vain things of the world. Behold, O my God, their, co their costly apparel, their ringlets and their bracelets and their ornaments of gold, and all their precious things which they are ornamented with. And behold, their hearts are set upon them, and yet they cry unto thee and say, We thank thee, O God, for we are a chosen people unto thee, while others shall perish. Yea, and they say that thou hast made it known unto them, that there shall be no Christ. O Lord God, how long wilt thou suffer that such wickedness and infidelity shall be among this people? O Lord, wilt thou give me strength, that I may bear with mine infirmities, for I am infirm, and such wickedness among this people doth pain my soul. O Lord, my heart is exceedingly sorrowful. Wilt thou comfort my soul in Christ? O Lord, wilt thou grant unto me that I may have strength, that I may su suffer with patience these afflictions which shall come upon me because of the iniquity of this people? O Lord, wilt thou comfort my soul and give unto me success and also my fellow laborers who are with me? Yea, Ammon, and Aaron, and Omner, and also Amulek, and Zizram, and also my two sons. Yea, even all these wilt thou comfort, O Lord. Yea, wilt thou comfort their souls in Christ. Wilt thou grant unto them that they may have strength, that they may bear their afflictions, which shall come upon them because of the iniquities of this people. O Lord, wilt thou grant unto us that we may have success in bringing them again unto thee in Christ. Behold, O Lord, their souls are precious, and many of them are our brethren, Therefore give unto us, O Lord, power and wisdom, that we may bring these, our brethren, again unto thee. Now it came to pass that when Alma had said these words, that he clapped his hands upon all them who were with him, and behold, as he clapped his hands upon them, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And after that they did separate themselves one from another, taking no thought for themselves what they should eat, or what they should drink, or, where, or what they should put on. And the Lord provided for them, that they should hunger not, neither should they thirst, yea, and he also gave them strength that they should suffer no manner of afflictions, save it were swallowed up in the joy of Christ. Now this was according to the prayer of Alma, and this because he prayed in faith. Chapter 32 Alma teaches the poor whose afflictions had humbled them. Faith is a hope in which, and that which is not seen, which is true. Alma testifies that angels ministered to men, women, and children. Alma compares the word unto a seed. It must be planted and nourished. Then it grows into a tree from which the fruit of eternal life is picked, about 74 B.C. And it came to pass that they did go forth, and began to preach the word of God unto the people, entering into their synagogues and into their houses, yea, and even they did preach the word in their streets. And it came to pass that after much labor among them, they began to have success among the poor class of people, for behold, they were cast out of the synagogues because of the coarseness of their apparel. Therefore they were not permitted to enter into their synagogues to worship God, being esteemed as filthiness, therefore they were poor, yea, they were esteemed by their brethren as dross. Therefore they were poor as to things of the world, and also they were poor in heart. Now as Alma was teaching and speaking unto the people upon the hill Onida, there came a great multitude unto him, who were those of whom we, ha we have been speaking, of whom were poor in heart, because of their poverty as to the things of the, as to the, things of the world. And they came unto Alma, and the one who was the foremost among them said unto him, Behold, what shall these, my brethren, do? For they are despised of all men because of their poverty, yea, and more especially by our priests. For they have cast us out of our synagogues, which we have labored abundantly to build with our own hands. And they have cast us out because of our exceeding poverty, and we have no place to worship our God. And behold, what shall we do? And now when Alma had heard this, he turned away, turned him about, his face immediately towards him, and he beheld with great joy, for, be, for he beheld that their afflictions had truly humbled them, and that they were in a preparation to hear the word. Therefore he did say no more to the other multitude, but he stretched forth his hand and cried unto those whom he beheld, who were truly penitent, and said unto them, I behold that ye are lowly in heart, and if so, blessed are ye. Behold, thy brother hath said, What shall we do? 
for we are cast out of our synagogues that we cannot worship our God. Behold, I say unto you, do you suppose that you cannot worship God, save it be in your synagogues only? And moreover, I would ask, do you suppose that you must not worship God only once in a week? I say unto you, it is well that you are cast out of your synagogues, that you may be humble, and that you may learn wisdom, for it is necessary that you should learn wisdom, for it is because that ye are cast out, that ye are despised of your brethren, because of your exceeding poverty, that ye are brought to a lowliness of heart, for ye are necessarily brought to be humble. And now, because ye are compelled to be humble, blessed are ye, for a man sometimes, if he is compelled to be humble, seeketh repentance, and now surely whosoever repenteth shall find mercy, and he that findeth mercy, and endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And now, as I said unto you, that because you were compelled to be humble, you were blessed. Do you not suppose that they who are more blessed that they are more blessed, who truly humble themselves because of the word? Yea, he that truly humbleth himself, and repenteth of his sins, and endureth to the end, the same shall be blessed. Yea, much more blessed than they who are compelled to be humble because of their exceeding poverty. Therefore, blessed are they who humble themselves without being compelled to be humble, or rather, in other words, blessed is he that believed in the words of God, and is baptized without stubbornness of heart, yea, without being brought to know the word, or even compelled to know, before they will believe. Yea, there are many who do say, If thou wilt show unto us a sign from heaven, then we shall know of a surety, then we shall believe. Now I ask, Is this faith? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. For if a man knoweth a thing, he hath no cause to believe, for he knoweth, knoweth it. And now, how much more cursed is he that knoweth the will of God, and doeth it not, than he that only believeth, or only hath cause to believe, and falleth into transgression? Now of this thing you must judge. Behold, I say unto you, that it is on the one hand, even as it is on the other, and it shall be unto every man according to his work. And now, as I said concerning faith, Faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. Therefore, if you have faith, you hope for things which are not seen, which are true. And now, behold, I say unto you, and I would that you should remember, that God is merciful unto all who believe on his name. Therefore, he desireth in the first place that you should believe, yea, even on his word. And now, he imparteth his word by angels unto men, yea, not only men, but women also. Know this, not, know this is not all. Little children do have words given unto them many times which confound the wise and the learned. And now, my beloved brethren, as you have desired to know of me what you shall do, because you are afflicted and cast out, now I do not desire that you should suppose that I mean to judge you only according to that which is true. For I do not mean that you that ye all of you have been compelled to humble yourselves. For I verily believe that there are some among you who would humble themselves, let them be in whatsoever circumstances they might. Now, as I said concerning faith, that it was not a perfect knowledge, even so it is with my words. You cannot know of their surety at first, unto perfection, any more than faith is a perfect knowledge. But behold, if you will awake and arouse your faculties, even to an experiment upon my words, and exercise a particle of faith, yea, even if you can do more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you, even until you believe in a manner that you can give place for a portion of my words. Now, we will compare the word unto a seed. Now, if you give place that a seed may be planted in your heart, behold, if it be a true seed or a good seed, if you do not cast it out by your unbelief that you will resist, this, that you will resist the Spirit of the Lord, behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts. And when you feel these swelling motions, you will begin to say within yourselves, It must needs be that this is a good seed, or that the word is good, for it beginneth to enlarge my soul, yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding, Yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. Now behold, would not this increase your faith? I say unto you, yea. Nevertheless, it hath not grown up to a perfect knowledge. But behold, as the seed swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow, then you must needs say that the seed is good. For behold, it swelleth, and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow. And now behold, will not this strengthen your faith? Yea, it will strengthen your faith, for you will say, I know that this is a good seed, for behold, it sprouteth and beginneth to grow. And now, behold, are you sure that this is a good seed? I say unto you, Yea, for every seed bringeth forth into unto its own likeness. Therefore, if a seed groweth, it is good, 
But if it groweth not, behold, it is not good, therefore it is cast away. And now, behold, because ye have tried the experiment, and planted the seed, and it swelleth and sprouteth, and beginneth to grow, ye must needs know that the seed is good. And now, behold, is your knowledge perfect? Yea, your knowledge is perfect in that thing, and your faith is dormant, and this because you know. For you know that the word has swelled your souls, and you also know that it has sprouted up, that your understanding doth begin to be enlightened, and your mind doth begin to expand. O oh, then, is not this real? I say unto you, Yea, because it is light, and whatsoever is light is good, because it is discernible. Therefore you must know that it is good. And now, behold, after you have tasted this light, is your knowledge perfect? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. Neither must you lay aside your faith. For you have only exercised your faith to plant the seed, that you might try the experiment to know if the seed was good. And behold, as the tree beginneth to grow, you will say, Let us nourish it with great care, that it may get root, that it may grow up, and bring forth fruit unto us. And now, behold, if you nourish it with much care, it will get root, and grow up, and bring forth fruit. But if you neglect the tree, and take no thought for its nourishment, behold, it will not get any root. And when the heat of the sun cometh and scorcheth it, because it hath no root, it withers away, and you pluck it up and cast it out. Now, this is not because the seed was not good. Neither is it because the fruit thereof would not be desirable, but it is because your ground is barren, and you will not nourish the tree, therefore you cannot have the fruit thereof. And thus, if you will not nourish the word, looking forward with an eye of faith to the fruit thereof, you can never pluck of the fruit of the tree of life. But if you will nourish the word, yea, nourish the tree as it beginneth to grow, by your faith with great diligence and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, it shall take root, and behold, it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. And because of your diligence and your faith and your patience with the word and nourishing it, that it may take root in you, behold, by and by you shall pluck the fruit thereof, which is most precious, which is sweet above all that is sweet, and which is white above all that is white. Yea, and pure above all that is pure, and you shall feast upon this fruit, even until you are filled, that ye hunger not, neither thirst, neither shall you thirst. Then, my brethren, ye shall reap the rewards of your faith, and your diligence, and patience, and long-suffering, waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you.